that, Madam President. Thank you, Tina. Good afternoon. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Providence City Council. Today is Thursday, April 1st, 2021. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council President Matos. Present. Councilwoman Anthony. Present. Councilwoman Castillo. Present. Councilman Correa. Present. Councilman Espinal is absent. Councilman Gonzalez. Present. Councilwoman Harris. Present. Councilman Igliosi. Present. Councilor Kerwin. Present. Councilwoman LaFortune. Present. Councilor Miller. Present. Councilman Narducci. Here. Councilwoman Ryan. Present. Councilor Salvatore is absent. Councilman Taylor. Here. You have 13 present and two absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. The invocation, the invocation is going to be given by Councilman Chairman John Igliosi. Madam President, in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, um, bless our, all our family, friends, and relatives. Bless all our loved ones who, who have passed away in these past years. Bless all our loved ones who are, are struggling with any health issues. Um, bless our constituents that we represent. Um, bless, um, um, uh, we're coming upon the Holy Week and bless all our brothers and sisters who are Christians and Catholics and anybody who celebrates the, this religious um, celebration. And bless all our other brothers and sisters who subscribe to other um, religions and denominations and which we all hopefully can achieve common ground together for, to create a more peaceful and loving world. And finally, Lord, bless our council president um, and her family on her new uh, future new position and also um, her family and friends and um, as they move forward, hopefully as they move forward to make us all proud in Providence, and of course, in, in our wards and the city council. Thank you. God bless him, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. 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 Um, the Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America is going to be led by Councilman James Taylor. I pledge allegiance, so allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America, America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Okay. Next, could I please have Solicitor Odena state the legality of this meeting on the record? Uh, good evening, City Solicitor Jeff Dana. Per executive order of the governor of the state of Rhode Island, we are permitted to hold this meeting via Zoom. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Approval of minutes, Journal of Proceedings number five of the regular meeting of the City Council held March 4th, 2021, and Journal of Proceedings number six of the regular meeting of the City Council held March 18th, 2021. Madam President. Lila Ryan. Motion to approve item three and a voice vote. Second. The motion has been made a second to approve item number three on a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? May I have it? Appointments by the city. Madam Council President. Neither Ryan. Motion to waive the reading of items four and five and to receive the appointments made by the city council president. Second, Madam President. The motion has been a second to waive the readings of item number four and five, and those items are going to be received. All those in favor? Aye. 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 May I have it? Presentation of resolutions, item number six, Councilman Goncalves, Correa, and Councilor Miller, Council President Machos, Councilwoman Harris and Ryan, 
Resolution condemning AAPI attacks and denouncing xenophobic violence. Are there any further co-sponsors? Councilwoman Castillo, um, Chairman Igliosi, Councilwoman Anthony, uh, Councilman Taylor, Councilman uh, Arducci, Councilman Arducci, Councilwoman, uh, Councilor Kerwin, Councilwoman La Fortune. I, I got to remember, you can't see me raising my hand, huh? Yeah, so you, you got to speak up for me. <laughs> 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 Thanks. I see that uh, Councilman Gonzalez has his uh, hands up. Councilman? Madam President, do you want to take a motion first and then discussion? Yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you, Lita. <laughs> okay. I'd like to take this opportunity <laughs> to make a motion to pass item six on a voice vote. Second, Madam President. The motion has been made and second to pass item number six on a voice vote. All, now I have the discussion. Uh, call. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I may... Uh, Majority Leader, I'd like to speak on behalf of uh, the three resolutions that I put in. If that's if that's okay, maybe we can do it in one swoop. Uh, the item has to be um, read into the record before yeah. you can speak on it. So if you can speak on item six, sir, and then we'll we'll go along as uh, as the clerk reads them. Okay. Sure. So th thank you for the opportunity to speak on this item. Uh, like so many in our country. Uh, I've been deeply disturbed and appalled, uh, as many of you have, by the spike of anti-Asian harassment and bigotry and racism. Um, the anti-Asian violence that has spiked since the start of COVID is absolutely unconscionable. And I hope that uh, as a council, we can unanimously stand in solidarity with uh, the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Uh, following the heinous and atrocious uh, murders of, of eight people, mostly women in the metro Atlanta area. Uh, no city, including Providence, is immune to this, and we can't be silent um, in the face of xenophobia. And so today I ask that you join me in certainly condemning these acts, as well as uh, condemning Asian hate and discrimination more broadly, <coughs> which has been uh, exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Um, any further discussion? Okay. Motion has been made and second to approve item number, number six. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The aye have it. Item number seven, Councilman Gonsalves, Correa, and Narducci, resolution in support of confronting noise pollution in Providence and a request to explore acoustic cameras and other mitigation solutions. Are there any further co-sponsors? Uh, I see Castillo and Chairman Igliosi. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilwoman Anthony. Okay, uh, Councilwoman La Fortune. Madam um, President, Mayor <clears throat> Ryan, motion to um, uh, direct item seven to the Committee on Municipal Operations and Oversight. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made in seconds so to send item number seven to the um, committee, a special committee on municipal oversight. Any um, any discussion? Councilman, uh, Councilwoman La Fortune, just your hands up. Okay, Councilman Goncal. Uh, Councilman, are you trying to speak? Or? Yes, I am. Am okay. I allowed to speak now, Madam Chair? Yes, we just read the item number seven. Oh. You wanted to speak on item number seven? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, Majority Leader, for that. Uh, the impetus for the second resolution I'm putting forth is um, 
regarding support of confronting noise pollution in Providence in a, in a request to explore acoustic cameras and some other mitigation solutions. Um, as you all know, the, the Providence Code of Ordinances, Chapter um, 16, I believe, includes codified regulations on noise in terms of what's permissible and what's deemed unnecessary or excessive. And um, in a mid-sized city with dense, bustling activity like Providence, the, the noise adds up. And whether it be vehicles and motorcycles with uh, modified exhaust systems or overamplified music from cars, uh, entertainment venues, highway noise, leaf blowers, construction, illegal fireworks, and the list goes on and on. No noise pollution is is uh, a problem, and it's actually been coined by many as a secondhand smoke and should be taken seriously as it can lead to health problems for people, whether it's, you know, hearing loss, loss of concentration, be it people at work or, or kids at school. And it, it also creates weakened mental acuity and, and loss of sleep and can even trigger PTSD for some of our veterans and make those with sound sensitivity and hearing disorders, um, uh, those people who are suffering from that worse off. So uh, people just want peace and quiet in their homes and addressing uh, the noise issue will make Providence a more livable city. Uh, the UK and a bunch of international countries have uh, gotten really creative on this issue and their noise guidelines are significantly better to protect people against noise. I think uh, over 40 international cities. I'm, I'm thinking about a study that I read recently, including uh, Shenzhen, Beijing, Paris, and, and others have begun trials, and they've experimented with installing acoustic cameras or, or decibel noise monitoring stations in a bid to cut down on some of the noise. Um, Anti-noise ordinances, legislation, and, and enforcement, as you know, is not always effective. So this is a, a great example of a solution, and I think we should explore the means to do it. Providence can be an early U.S. pioneer by researching and examining and potentially piloting or implementing technologies to reduce and um, mitigate environmental noise. So this resolution essentially calls for the city administration to look into it, and I hope the council can support it in the future. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilman. Looking forward to the discussion and committee. All, all, motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There I have it. Item number eight, Councilman Gonsalves and Correa. Resolution thanking Brown, Us Brown University Council of Students for their continued service to Brown and Providence. Are there any Madam President. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Lita Ryan. Sorry, Madam Clerk, did you want to ask for additional sponsors first? Yes, Majority Leader. You go yeah. for it. The sponsors for item number eight, I have Chairman Igliosi. Thank you, Madam President. Councilwoman Anthony. Uh, Councilwoman Castillo. <clears throat> um, Councilman Arducci, you, were you trying to sponsor? No. No? Okay. Councilman Taylor. Okay. Any additional? All right. So, Leader Ryan. Yes, Madam President. I would like to make a motion to pass item eight on a voice vote. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made and second to pass item number eight on a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Oh, Councilman uh, Goncalf, do you want to speak on this item? I'm sorry. Oh, I said Councilwoman LaFortune, would you, your hands is. Yeah, I think, I thought I pushed the um, raise hand. Um, I would like to, um, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, not abstain, but what I was looking for. Recuse. Recuse, Recuse. Recuse myself. Okay. I don't know why All I right. slipped my mind. Recuse right. myself from that item, please. Sorry. All right. So. Councilwoman LaFortune is going to recuse from that item. Councilman Goncalf, you want to speak on this item? Also? Sure. Sorry that I'm talking so much, Madam Chair. As, as a two-time Brown alum, I, I know firsthand the great work that uh, the Council of Students at Brown does. And I want to congratulate USC President uh, Jason Carroll 
and incoming president, uh, Summer Dye, and all the students at UCS for their service, and ultimately congratulate and recognize uh, the UCS for its leadership and commitment to making Brown University and the city of Providence a better place. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Madam Clark. We, 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 uh, all in favor? we we voted already on it. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, item number nine, Councillor Miller, Councilman Correa, Gonzalez, and Narducci, Council President Mato, <laughs> Women Harris, and Ryan. Madam President, oh, sorry, jumping in again. <laughs> Resolution recognizing April 2nd, 2021 as World Autism Day. Are there any further co-sponsors? Um, I say Councilman, um, Councilman Taylor. Castillo. Si. Councilwoman Castillo, Councilwoman La Fortune, Councilwoman Anthony. Any additional, uh, Councilor Miller? Uh, no, Madam President, sorry, just to speak. When we oh, to speak, okay. Uh, Chairman Igliosi, do you want to speak? No, Madam President, okay, there's just no objection. I'd like to co-sponsor, please. Thank you. All right, co-sponsor from Council, Con Chairman Igliosi. So, um, can I take the motion and then I'll have the discussion the councilor speak? Madam President. Leader Ryan. Motion to pass item nine on a voice vote. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made and second to pass item number nine on a voice vote. Uh, discussion, I have Councilor Miller. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you for joining me in recognizing World Autism Day and especially Thank a constituent of mine who brought the day to my attention. If my camera wasn't acting up, you could see that I'm wearing blue to recognize World Autism Day. <laughs> um, you know, uh, long conversations with a constituent about the ways in which, you know, even when we're not in a pandemic, our society is not built to support neurodivergent people and, and people with autism. Um, and so just recognizing this together as a body and encouraging all of our residents to uh, recognize and educate ourselves on autism and other uh, neurodivergent uh, uh, conditions. Thank you so much. Madam President. Uh, Councilman Adjushi. Thank you. I would also like to speak briefly. Um, having three nephews with autism, I think it's very important that uh, we recognize this day moving forward and uh, continue to support autism on behalf of the youth in the state of Rhode Island and in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Motion has been made on second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Pulse. Aye. 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 Item number 10, Councilman Narducci, Correa, and Gonsalves. Resolution regarding the Windmill Elementary School property. Are there any additional co-sponsors? I would like to co-sponsor. And I see uh, Councilwoman La Fortune. Councilwoman Castillo. Councilwoman Castillo. Chairman Igliosi. Councilman Taylor. Uh, Deputy Majority Leader Harris. Councilor Miller. Any additional co sponsor? Uh, Leader Ryan. Councilwoman Anthony. I'd like to speak if I may. Okay. Sure. So um, yeah, I would, we got we got I the co like All right. So Madam, we're gonna Madam President. <clears throat> we, we have the co-sponsor. So Leader Ryan. Um, <coughs> motion to pass item ten on a voice vote. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made and second to pass item number ten. Number ten okay. on a voice vote. Are we gonna uh, discuss it first? Yes, yeah, so I'm going into discussion right now and. Uh, the sponsor would like to speak, as that's Councilman Narducci, and then I'm going to go to Councilwoman Anthony. Madam President, thank you. As uh, most of you know, obviously, that Windmill Street School is in my ward. It's very sensitive to me. Um, my dad went there. We went there. My kids went there. My mother worked there. My wife worked there. Uh, roughly about 10, maybe 11 years ago because of a argument that I had with the uh, Tavares administration. My school, Win well, Windmill Street School, was shut down uh, and never done nothing um, with the building. 
right now, if it was if it was a home in our neighborhood, the city would be finding it for the way it looks with busted windows. Uh, I got people living in it. The cops are constantly going there, cleaning, uh, get, getting the people out of there. Um, graffiti all over the place, but constantly cleaning the graffiti. Uh, it, it's just a big time I saw. If you remember, Jordan Day made a uh, presentation to this body that $30 million was being set aside to uh, refurbish Windmill Street School, and they were going to be utilizing that into a swing school. Uh, as they did work in other schools uh, throughout the city. Uh, now all of a sudden that price tag went from 30 million to 45 million, and now all of a sudden they don't have the extra 15 million, which I find odd, seeing how o- over 100 million dollars is um, has just been approved on on a school bond. Um, so I, my, you know, my plan is taking it from and moving it back into PRA like we did years ago, and moving forward. And my intentions for Windmill Street School is to see um, housing for the uh, homeless veterans and elderly. Um, uh, uh, again, it's just been way too long. If they did what they were supposed to do with this building when they first shut it down, the price tag probably would have been three or four million. Now all of a sudden, you know, the price tag's up around forty-five million. And again, we were bullshitting about it. Excuse me, I didn't, I didn't mean to say it that way. I was lied to by the administration too many different times about Windmill Street School. And like I said, I did have pictures to show you, but unfortunately couldn't get on my computer. Uh, if you go by there and you look at it, uh, it's in the heart of my neighborhood. The surrounding houses around Windmill Street School are all very well taken care of. And these people for the last 10 years that have lived there have to look at this eyesore Um I, I just can't believe the administration anymore, and uh, I, I got to do. You know, I, I need to do what I have to do moving forward with uh, Windmill Street School. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Anthony. Yes, I just like to support my fellow councilmen. I, in general, I would say that it's hard to look at the list of uh, projects that are planned for um, part of this uh, uh, school construction bond. And, and know that we really haven't had an opportunity as council members to really thoroughly discuss that list, how it was formed, you know, sufficient monies, um, things like that. So I just have to say that I'm very supportive of Councilman Narducci and, and I'm also very frustrated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chairman Igliosi. Yeah, Madam President, I just want to dovetail on what uh, actually Councilman Anthony mentioned. Actually, the Finance Committee just recently we had the um, project manager in, and we just discussed that $160 million bond, and they had the laundry list in phase one and phase two of school refurbishments throughout the city. Um, they didn't have the complete breakdown, so we actually having, um, as we moved, to, we moved forward with the bond initiative, so that's moving forward, but we're bringing the project manager and the new, I guess, that's um, the new city person mr robertson for next week to give us more detail on that bond money and then of course what they plan on doing with those schools um that's been as you know a bone of contention with our internal auditor with the administration and um she's been they she's been very frustrated with the fact that she hasn't been able to get that information in particular so um we are um we're working on as of this week next week we're going to bring them forward and they're going to give us more details on what's happening so i I um, urge all my council colleagues to attend the finance meeting and you know, get your questions ready to figure out what they plan on doing with this money, how they crafted the list, et cetera. Councilwoman Anthony is correct. She brought up a particular issues about like, why was one school on, why was it not? And, and they had, they created like a priority list on why it would be done and not done. It was really interesting. So that's gonna be a, a, um, a deep dive conversation I believe hopefully next week when they get prepared to discuss it. So I urge my council colleagues and, and windmill was on it, by the way, too. It was on, it was on the, I think it was the first one on the phase one list too. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? No, I just, uh, I just, I just want to say, Madam President, if I may, that, um, you know, I'm, I'm sick of discussions and nothing being done, especially with this particular school. Um, it's been a discussion now for 10 years. 
and it's still vacant and it's still uh, an abandoned building. And like I said, I, I urge any one of my colleagues to drive by and look at Windmill Street School and see if you'd like to live across the street from it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councilman. The motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? May I have it? Reports from committee. Committee on Finance, Councilman John Jay. Madam, Madam President. Lee Ryan. I'd like to make a motion to waive the reading of items 11 through 16 and pass in a voice vote and refer back to the Board of Contract and Supply. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made a second to waive the readings of items number 11 through 16. And these items are going to be uh, passed on a voice vote and are going to be referred back to the Board of Contract and Supply. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? May I have it? From the clerk's desk, item Madam 17. President. Leader Ryan. Motion to waive the reading of items 17 and 18 and refer to the Committee on Public Works. Second. Motion has been made on second to waive the readings of item number 17 through 18, and these items are going to go to the Committee on Public Works. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? May yeah, I have it? Item number 19, petition from 14 Vinton LLC, requesting a zone change for the property located on assessment. <laughs> Plat 28, lot 682, 14 Vinton Street, from R3 to C2. The uses on said property shall be restricted to either two-family, three-family, or multi-family dwellings. Refer to the comedian ordinance. Item number 20, petitions for compensation for injuries and damages. Refers to the committee on claims and pending suit. Communications and reports. <coughs> Item number 21. Communication from Chase Baptista, Vice Chair, Providence Human Relations Commission, dated March 23, 2021, appointing <coughs> Michelle Mooney of 65 Medway Street, Apartment 2, Providence, Rhode Island, 02906, as my designee to report to represent me at all future Equal Pay Task Force meetings. Proceed. Presentation of resolutions and congratulations. Item number 22, Council President Matos and members of the City Council. Resolution extending, congratulations. Madam President. Lisa Ryan. Motion to pass item 22 and a voice vote. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made a second to pass item number 22 and a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yeah, I have it. Presentation of resolutions in memoriam, item 23. Council President Matos and members of the City Council, resolution extending sympathy. Madam President. Leader the Ryan. Motion to pass item 23 on a unanimous rising vote. Second. Motion has been made and second to pass item number 23 on a unanimous rising vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I have it. Madam President. Either Ryan. Motion to suspend Rule 16B of the Rules of the Providence City Council in order to take matters not appearing on the printed docket. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made and second to uh, take items that did not appear in, the printed, in our printed docket uh, is the suspension of our Rule 16B. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There yeah, I have it. Presentation of ordinance, Councilwoman Harris and Councilman Narducci. An ordinance amending Chapter 2020-19, number 164, the CARES Act Grant Budget Ordinance and authorizing the Department of Planning and Development to submit the CDBG CV, ESG CV, and HAPWA CV budget and applications to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Refer to the Committee on Urban Development, Renewal, and Planning. Presentation of resolution, item number 25, Councilwoman LaFortune, Anthony, Council 
Amendment, Espinal, Gonsal, Councilor Kerwin, and Miller. Resolution establishing a special commission on stimulus relief funds. Okay, um, I'm gonna take any additional uh, co-sponsor. Okay, um, I see Councilwoman LaFortune would like to speak. This item is gonna be referred to the Committee of Finance, but Councilwoman LaFortune. Thank you, Council President. Um, so we all are anticipating about $130 million in stimulus relief fund that is coming into the city of Providence. And I think it's really important that um, the council, the residents, um, our stakeholders have a say in how that money should be distributed. We know that there are some major financial um, implications, some of them caused by um, the COVID pandemic, some of them have existed before that. So we want to make sure that the money is allocated in a way where we're seeing true and long-term investments into the city. And um, it's important that we work in partnership um, with our mayor's office in ensuring that there's a public process and that we can decide how those funds um, can be utilized. Um, this is major, like this is a one in a lifetime um, opportunity for us to make some real investments into the city of Providence. So I do hope that um, we can have a robust discussion in the committee um, about this and, um, and all of you will support um, that we have a voice and also that the Pro Providence residents um, get to decide how the stimulus money is allocated and that also there is a plan to allocate it appropriately and um, finally, um, those allocations um, are true investments in the city of Providence. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman Anthony. Yes, thank you so much, Council President. I'd like to speak in support of this resolution. Um, I've had many discussions with people asking what's gonna be done with these funds. And I've also heard many people say, we'd like to see the politics um, not be a part of this. And I think this is a wonderful way of ensuring that the politics doesn't get involved necessarily in how this money is distributed and that we truly do listen. We have a group that will you know, meet and it will be representative of our community and that, that will guide, they will guide our decisions, the decisions, the very important decisions that we're making for the city. And I'm talking a lot about long-term systemic problems. This money can really solve a lot of different issues. And um, I just am very, very strongly in support of this resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any, for, any further discussion? Okay. This item is being referred to the Committee on Finance. Madam Clerk. Communications, item number 26. Communication from His Honor the Mayor dated March 26, 2021 submitting the Community Development Block Grant Budget for program year 2021 to 2022. Referred to the Committee on Urban Redevelopment, Renewal and Planning. Item number 27. Madam President. Lisa Ryan. Um, I'd like to make a motion to waive the reading of items 27 through 31 on uh, appointments to the Salary Review Commission. Uh, and refer them all to the Committee on Finance. Second, Madam President. Thank you. The uh, motion has been made on second to waive the readings of item number 27 through 31. These are appointments to the Salary Review committee, uh, Commission, and these are going to be referred to the Committee on Finance. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Madam. Yeah, I have it. Uh, Lisa Ryan. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn in the memory of Alice Darcy Hearn, who passed away on March 27th. Alice was the loving mother of John and Marie Hearn of Providence on, and Marion and William on Hearn. Um, she was the uh, grandmother of Amanda, on, Amanda Heeman, who was the wife of our Nick Heeman, on, and the great uh, grandmother of Noah and Theo. I'd like to also um, adjourn in memory of our colleague, Pedro Espinal's um, beloved brother-in-law and dear friend, Fernando Albizu, who passed on March 27th, all too soon, falling victim to COVID-19 and leaving behind a beautiful family. Um, also at the request of Councilman Taylor, I'd like to also adjourn 
in memory of his neighbor um, who passed just this Monday, Tom Tan Fo, on behalf of the Providence City Council, we offer our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Fernando Albizu, Alice Hearn, and Tom Tan Fo. Second, Madam President. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, yeah, have it. We're adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Thank you Easter, well. everyone. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you.